femur. Okay, any questions on the, uh, the distal part of the femur? Okay, so the femur again is the longest and the strongest bone, very strong. So when you break your femur, okay, that's some major trauma that you receive. However, as you, you age, then you lose some of that, that bone density, right? And the most common type of fractures in the elderly is what? Hip. It's going to be the hip. It's a hip fracture. Okay. Uh, again, review. So the uh, tibial plateau or the, the knee joint is going to be about half an inch, 1.5 centimeters, 1.25 centimeters below the uh, apex of the patella. Okay, you guys are already familiar with the uh, from condyle to condyle. Okay, that intercondylar plane that we're talking about here, there is going to be a, an angulation of five to seven degrees medially. So most, most knees that we do is a medial lateral. So we're going this way, up this way, so we're gonna have a five to seven degree angulation of the knee. Whereas if you're coming this way, you guys took, just took a quiz on it, it's gonna be the opposite angle. <laughs> All right? All right, some terms that I want to uh, clarify. Radiographic hip, okay? This is not to be confused with the hip bones, okay? When we're taking an x-ray of the hip, all it's simply referring to is the articulation with the, uh, from the head of the femur to the acetabulum of the pelvis, okay? So we're, the radiographic hip is simply referring to the hip joint, okay? And this is also going to include your SI joint and your symphysis pubis. Can you say that again? I don't remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember what I said? It's SI joint. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so the head of the femur, the hip joint is the, the head of the femur to the acetabulum of the pelvis. Mm. Okay. But this radiographic hip is also going to include, we've already talked about the hip joint, it's also going to include the SI joint and your symphysis pubis. All right, so your proximal femur is going to include the head, the neck. Remember your shoulder? Okay, our shoulder, you had two areas of your shoulder where you had those bony projections and rough surfaces. Remember what those, those were called? Okay, the tubercle. Okay, so you had your greater and lesser tubercle. In the femur, we have our greater trochanter and we have our lesser trochanter. Okay. In the area between the tubercles was your bicipital groove. Here we have our intertrochantric crest. And this crest is only demonstrated in the anterior. It doesn't have the posterior. It's only on the anterior that portion of the femur. That one says posterior. Which one? No, on your side. On the bottom of the side. Uh, no, that should be anterior. Okay. Yeah, that should be anterior. Give me a second. I lied. It is posterior. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's demonstrated on the posterior surface. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, what else do we have here? The fovea capitis is an indentation. It's an indentation in the head of the femur. This is where the ligament, a major ligament, is going to attach. And I put it up here. I don't think you guys have it on your notes. The ligament is called the ligamentum teres, which holds the femur inside the hip socket, the fovea capitis. And that's it. Any questions on this page? All right. That attaches to the fovea capitis, you mean? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, angles of the proximal femur. So, a couple angles here that are critical in, in positioning for the leg, um, sorry, for the femur and the, the neck of the femur. First, we want to note that there is going to be a medial angulation, okay, from the longitudinal plane of about 5 to 15 degrees, so it angles medially about 5 to 15 degrees, give or take 10 degrees. Then the relationship between the neck and the femur 
distribution between the neck and the shaft of the femur is about 125 degrees. 125 degrees. But as technologists, the angle that we are more concerned with is this anterior angulation of the neck and the femoral head, which <coughs> angles anteriorly about 15 to 20 degrees. This is what we are more concerned with radiographically. <coughs> okay, so there's an angulation of 15 to 20 degrees of the head projecting anteriorly. <clears throat> All right, so we talked about the radiographic hip. <coughs> Let's talk about the pelvis. Okay. The pelvis is going to include your two inanimate bones, or your two hip bones, mm -hmm. your sacrum, and then your coccyx. All mm -hmm. these together is categorized under the term pelvis. Now, if we're talking about the hip bones, another term for the hip bones is the pelvic girdle. Okay, so the hip bones are the pelvic girdle. When I'm talking about the hip bones of the pelvic girdle, it's talking about these inanimate bones right here, which is this slide. Okay, so this refers to the hip bones. Okay, we have a pair, one left, one right. The hip bone is broken up into two, I'm sorry, three different parts. You have your ilium, you have your acetabulum, you have your ilium, you have your ischium, and you have your pubic bone. And these three bones form at the hip joint, forming the acetabulum. Mm -hmm. Now I also made some corrections on the slide, <coughs> okay? Because I think you had, you had posterior over here, right? And it's confusing thinking that this is the posterior view of this uh, image, mm -hmm. okay? So this is an anterior view of this image, and then the posterior, should be over here. So anterior, posterior of this lateral hip bone. And then this is an anterior uh, view of the set of hip bones, yes? So when you say pelvis, you're referring to the entirety? Mm -hmm. Yes, so when you're talking about the pelvis, the it's going to be this, this, and then your sacrum and your coccyx. Okay. That's mm -hmm. the entire pelvis. Okay. Technically. And the with all that minus the sacrum. And yes, okay. yes. But what is it that we're saying when we're fe feeling for, for the hips? We say we're feeling for the hips, and we're usually feeling up here, right? Mm -hmm. Or we're saying we're feeling for the pelvis, and we're feeling for this. But again, in proper terminology, pelvis is the entire section. All right. So let's uh, identify each of the hip bones. First one that we're going to cover here is the ilium. We're all familiar with the iliac crest, right? That is a palpable area that we feel uh, when positioned for different body parts, uh, uh, body views. And then we know what the as is, right? This is the other palpable area of the ilium. So this we're already familiar with. Now, the, this entire area here is known as the ala or the wing. We have an as is, but we also have a PSIS that's located on the posterior part of this crest. It's your PSIS. Okay. Anteriorly, you have a spine, an anterior inferior iliac spine, and then you have a posterior inferior iliac spine on the posterior side. Right below the ala is the, the body. And then you have this notch. Okay, it's the greater sciatic notch of the ilium. It's the greater sciatic notch of the ilium. It's not sciatic. Sciatic, sciatic. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Do we eat them? Do we don't know. Is this a potato, <laughs> potato? <laughs> He's busting your chops. Yeah. <laughs> 
It is not. It's a lawsuit. It's a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't feel it. It's not palpable. What is palpable? Okay, I haven't gotten there yet. What is palpable is the initial tuberosity. This is your butt bone. You know when you have your nephew or niece sitting down on your lap and it's just piercing right through your thigh. That's that's the uh, initial tuberosity. Yeah. What? Not the fit ones, the big chicks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> second part, the second part of the bone is the, now I made some corrections on here too because I found some typos. The, um, the ischium, okay, the ischium is broken down into two parts. You have the body and then you have the ramus. Okay, so look here closely. I, I don't know what exact corrections I made, but look here closely to see if it matches yours and then make the appropriate corrections, okay? So the ischium is broken down into two major parts. You have the body, okay, and then you have the ramus. The body in there is then broken down into two different bodies. You have a superior body and you have an inferior body. <clears throat> Upper and lower. Okay? Upper, lower. So up here we have the greater sciatic notch. Notch. Okay, of the ilium. Down here we have the lesser sciatic notch. Sciatic notch. Okay. Of the ischium. Why don't people say consistent? Ischium? You don't say ischium. Never mind. <laughs> so this is the lesser sciatic notch of the issue, okay? <coughs> and then you have the spine, you have the spine of the issue. Oh, is that good? Okay. All right, so we have a spine here, we have a spine there, right? Spine, spine, and then here's another spine, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and then this lower part here that's going to form this ring or the obturator foramen, so this right here um, is going to be the ramus. I think in your original one you had an upper and lower ramus, mm -hmm. yeah. so that's inferior, wrong. Inferior. No, it says inferior, inferior ramus. Inferior, yeah, that's wrong. It's just one ramus. Oh. So it's just one ramus on the, uh, on the ischium. Okay? Everybody got that? Yep. All right. All right, now the pubic bone. So the pubic bone, you have the upper portion here, okay, which is the body. You have the bodies here. And then what's gonna form the ring or the obturator foramen is you have two rhema. You have an upper or superior, and you have a lower or inferior rhema. Right you, here. You just so, said there was only one. On the previous, there's only one here. Oh, oh okay. So yeah, this so, is the okay. pubic so, so we'll, we'll, two. So go back to this slide. Okay. So A is just the body by itself, the upper body by itself, right? Right. So this is this is the upper body. Uh huh. This is the lower body. Okay. And then this is a ramus. It's neither inferior or superior. It's just showing one. It's just mm -hmm. one. That's the ramus of the issue. It's the ramus of the issue. Okay. Has a superior and inferior. Now, yeah, so now if I go back to the, the um, pubic bone, the pubis, you have an upper and a lower. Upper, lower, and then here's the ramus of the ischium right here, and this is what's going to form the obturator for ramen. Okay. So the pubis has two ramuses. The pubis has two. The ischium has the ischium one. Has one. Now the two pubic bones are going to meet in the middle forming the symphysis pubis. It is attached by a ligament and it is an amphiarthrodial joint. What's amphiarthrodial? Slightly movable. Slightly movable. So it's a slightly movable joint. And then those three bones together, you got the ilium, ischium, and the pubic bone form the acetabulum, okay, or the socket for the hip. Aren't you missing an 
Am I where? Amp, P, P, is it amp or amp That's amp P. P. Amp P. Evelyn's uh, your your spell check. Amp P. Like that? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Huh? License to spell stuff, right? So if we get it wrong. <laughs> I don't mark you guys for misspelling. A lot of you guys misspell. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You so you guys would all be failing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't like to mark you guys for misspelling, but I do mark you for making up your own words. <laughs> you, know, terms. you guys you guys laugh because you, you've all done that. That's <laughs> true. Right? All right. Wait, just to clarify. The obturator for ramina is formed by the superior and inferior ramus and the ramus of the ischium. Yes. Okay. All three ramuses make e yes. the obturator for ramen. Yes. And is the obturator for ramina of the humus or of the pelvis? It's just the obturator for ramina of the it pelvis. Is it? Mm -hmm. is it like so. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been asked that question before. I'll trade foramina of. I think it's a pubic bone, but no, I could be wrong. No, because yeah, it's formed by. Yeah, I guess three, not. Three yeah, it's the pelvis. Yeah, pelvis and then pelvis and then the ischia. So foramina and foramen, it's interchangeable. Foramen is one. Foramina, foramina is, is two. two. I mean, more than right. Yeah, oh. yeah foramen like plural. is one. Foramina is plural. Oh. Am I correct? Yeah. 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 Or is it pronounced foramina? <laughs> Evelyn? Tomato, <laughs> tomato. I don't know. Foramina. I, I can't hear you, Katie. Is there any way you can zoom the lights up there to make it close here? Is that better? Yep. Okay. You know what the problem is? It's the back window. Yeah, if you want to just um, spin it, mm. lower the blinds, close the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, bony topographic landmarks of the pelvis, we know about the crest, we know about the as is. The last two palpable bony landmarks is the symphysis pubis and the greater trochanter. These are landmarks that we constantly palpate to shoot pelvic x-rays, to shoot hip x-rays, okay, amongst other type of radiographic studies. We're also feeling for the symphysis pubis when we're doing abdominal x-rays. Now, do you guys know where your symphysis pubis is or your pubic symphysis? Right, it's, a, it's a highly sensitive area. Have you ever hit it? How about, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of personal. <laughs> well, not on the first day. <laughs> That's a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, can you rephrase that question? <laughs> have you ever pal have you palpated it? <laughs> Has anyone broken it? No, like, no like, I've wa like, walked into it something, uh -huh. like a table, and yeah, I, I went know. down. You know, I can't, I can't say that I've hit it. Yeah, yeah. yeah or bumped it. I can't say that I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so it's it very painful? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, let's regress a little bit. <laughs> we're, we're going off track. So, um, the synthesis pubis, it is a palpable landmark. It's, you know, it's in the groin area, around the groin area. So, instead of feeling for the symphysis pubis, the other landmark that we palpate for is your greater trochanter. Okay? So, the greater trochanter can be felt if you just put your hand right where your, the, the top of your femur is. Okay? Exactly. Now, take your feet, straighten out your feet, your leg, and rotate it inward and outward. Can you feel it bumping in and out? Yeah. That's your greater trochanter. You guys feel that? So, 
in feeling for that, and while the patient's on the table, I'll grab their leg and I'll wiggle it. Okay, but I'm going to tell them what I'm doing is I'm going to move your feet back and forth so you can feel for that drainer container. So I'm grabbing the feet, moving it in, in and out, and I'm feeling for that bump. Can you find it, Alex? I'm too bad. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, it can be found on anybody. <laughs> All right. So the drainer trochanter then is, is, is basically at the same level of the symphysis pubis. Okay. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is you want to avoid palpating the symphysis pubis at all costs and go for the greater trochanter. However, there will be some, some instances, scenarios, where you, you must feel for that symphysis pubis. Okay? And to feel for that, to feel for that, you would put your hand on their belly and push down on it until you feel a bony protrusion as you're making your way down the belly and then you'll feel that bony protrusion. That's the key, is belly down. You don't start from the bottom up. <laughs> okay. Now you're gonna have some issues. So it's gotta be belly down. All right, some more terms that I wanna get out of the way is the difference between a true and a false pelvis. The, the book, and the images that they have up here is very confusing, so it doesn't really tell you what the, the, the true and the false pelvis is. Um, but basically, this is based on the rim of the pelvis, which is this outer portion here, and it's an imaginary plane that takes you from the symphysis pubis all the way to the promontory of the sacrum. Okay, the promontory are the most prominent portion of the sacrum, so it's this imaginary line. Okay, so um, you take that imaginary line, above that is going to be the greater or false pelvis, and below that is going to be the uh, lesser or true pelvis. Is this making sense so far? Okay, I didn't think it would. All right, so here's a picture. Okay, so in pink, in pink is your false or greater pelvis, And then the lesser, or the lesser, is the true pelvis. Yes. No, no. Did I? Did I? What? We don't have like slides. I know. Okay. Yeah. So what you would do is just color this. Okay. So this area here, outside of the circle, now outside of the circle is your greater, or false. And then within the circle is going to be your true or lesser. I, I'm trying to be nice. Thank you. Yeah, being nice is stressful. Why, why is it true and right? What's the difference between true and Why is it true and why is it, uh, why is it considered false and why is it considered? Because up here it's just talking about an imaginary surface that's on top of this plane right here. So this is the plane that we're talking about. So there really isn't anything here. So if you look at it, the lateral position, there isn't any anatomical structures that are that are located here, per se, bone-wise. Okay, most of the bony anatom anatomy is going to be located below this imaginary line. And this is what caused it. This is why it's called the true pelvis because it's actually part of the pelvis anatomy that we discussed earlier. The bones, the anatomy, you got the sacrum, and you got the um, the coccyx, which is all located within this imaginary line, okay? So again, we're talking about bony structures. In describing soft anatomy, like the bladder, the bladder will say it was found on the, on the greater, okay? Whereas the colon is located within the lesser. So again, this only refers to the bony anatomy.
okay? So the birth canal then, again, we're talking about, now we've got two more imaginary, one more imaginary line that we're gonna put here. This next imaginary line is a plane from the initial tuberosity to your tailbone or your coccyx, okay? So during birth, the head, if again, natural birth, the head is going to enter through the plane of this, this uh, inlet, and then this imaginary line would be the outlet. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Okay, just know the difference between uh, true and false and greater and lesser, okay? Have you guys ever seen an MRI of childbirth? I'll have to show you guys one time. It's just pretty cool. So um, um, there's a couple, of, or you guys can Google it or YouTube it. There are a couple of videos out there where uh, a mom is delivering during an MRI procedure. You can actually see it leaving the birth canal and, you know. Was it was a purpose? Yeah, was a purpose like, of that? Hey, no, it's just a study. Just for yeah, it's just for science. Wow, that's yeah, great. Yeah, it's science. And because as far, as far as we know, MRI doesn't cause any type of, uh, you know, biological effects. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty intense. Just to see what the, the mom has to go through. I can imagine. I don't understand these images. They're just so... What is it? I don't know. Okay, so head goes through the uh, the inlet and then out the outlet. Oh, it's a baby. It's a baby, yeah. <laughs> like, what is that? What's she eat? <laughs> she ate a baby? It's a broken baby. Nothing serious yet. See the fraction. Well, you, you, you guys have these slides, right? Yeah. Yes. Are they the same in the book or did they update the book? Same. The same? same? Okay. All right, gender differences of the pelvis. We'll talk about shape, general shape, the angle of the pubic arch, and then the shape of the inlet. So, general shape, females are gonna be wider, shallow, and flared, whereas the male is going to be narrow, deep, and less flared. Okay, I guess they're talking about more flared this way, whereas the male is a little bit more this way, okay? And then the angle, the pubic angle here is going to be greater, okay, greater than 90 degrees for the female and less than 90 degrees for the male. And then the inlet for the female is gonna be more round, whereas the male is gonna be more oval or uh, heart-shaped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if we look at this, can we tell the difference between male and female? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. You know what the, give us, the, the biggest giveaway was? The case of the gonadal shielding on the, on the male, so that was the biggest giveaway. Okay, but so let's look at the angle. This is greater than 90, right? Mm -hmm. So that's female. It's also more wide and broad, and then the inlet is much more around. rounder. Okay. The angle is here is yeah. less than 90. It's a little bit more steep, not as, oh, yeah. as wide, and then the inlet is more, more narrower. Or That's the same angle, right? Like this one's not tilted more? What, what are you looking at, honey? The angle of the x-ray. They're the same, in the same position? Yeah, they're in the same position. Okay. Yeah, perpendicular. <laughs> All right, questions? <laughs> All right. Is it osteoporosis or is it gas on the female? On the female here? <laughs> are you talking about right here? On the, or on the, on the, the, on the wings. Spot. The darker spot, this is, these are gas patterns. Gas. Yeah, so this is, so if you recall your anatomy, gas <laughs> patterns on the periphery, this is gonna be what? Large this is large bowel, mm -hmm. okay, and then in the middle, Okay, it's gonna be large bowel. So you'll find gas mostly in the large bowel. So you have your ascending. You're not seeing the transverse, but you can see the descending, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then your sigmoid, sigmoid colon. So this is all 
uh, flatulence. Okay. Yeah, they're about, they about to um, release one. <laughs> but you guys also notice here that it's if you look over here, it looks a little bit blurry. Yeah. Okay. Well, why is that? What is yes? Power peristaltic activity. That's something we can't control. So even during the next <laughs> during the next ray, you are going to see some movement of the, of the bowels. Everything else is nice and clear, but you look here, you have peristaltic activity. So you're going to have some blurriness of, of that. And then same thing here, um, you can see some gas patterns of the abdomen, ascending. You can't see transverse, but here's descending. But you see like the grainy patchy part. Okay, that's fecal material. This is all fecal material. You created a passive package. <laughs> and then bless you. We're going to be doing abdomen.